In this video, we're going to learn how to format tables in Excel as well as how to convert our list or just our, our data that's in list form into an Excel table. Now, the reason you want to do that is once you have a table, you have a little bit more flexibility, more options in how you can format your data, how you can manipulate and filter through your data. So to get going, we want to make sure our cursor is just somewhere in our list. And as a side note, if you have a list of more data, which you very likely will, um, you want to make sure that there's no skipped rows. So everything is just one column next to the other. So with our cursor in that, um, we want to make sure we're here in the Home tab. If you look at the top left, we are. So we find the style section. So when you're there, you want to click on Format as Table. And when you do that, you get this drop down with pre-formatted options. Now you can create your own table style. If you click on that, you have to go element by element and do your formatting. But um, just to show you real quick, this is an option if your work has, um, your work or your client has specific colors they want you to use. So you would just go into format, you're in, you know, you get the format cell, fill, and here you can choose your fonts, borders. In our case, if we're talking about colors, click more colors and then custom. And here you can put in the RGB for your specific need. But we're going to cancel out of this because I'm just going to choose um, just one of the preset colors. So I'm going to use gold because I like gold. It's bright and sunny. And when I do that, you see that we got this format as tables dialog box come up. And our data is already pre-selected. Excel tried to figure out where that started and ended. And you see here, C4 to E10. and then. It's highlighted here with the little dashes. My table has headers. Yes, that's checked off, so good. And then we click OK. And when you do that, you automatically get a table formatted in the style that you chose. So in our case, we have a yellow um, gold color table with banded rows. So a few things to show you here before we go to see what's, what other options we have. If you need to add rows or columns, um, you can just come to your last cell. And if you tab over, which is what I'm doing, you'll see that you can start adding more rows. So let me undo that and delete them. Now, the other thing you'll see here at the bottom right, it's very hard to see, but there's a little hook at the bottom right corner of the table. Well, if you drag that to the right, you'll add more columns. If you drag it down, you add more rows. So that's another way to expand your table and maintain that formatting that you've created. So we'll undo that. Um, another thing to show you real quick, you only get this if you have a table, but you notice here are headers, salesperson, items, sold, dollars, and up here the CVE, column C, column D, column E. So as long as your cursor is anywhere on the table, when you scroll up and down, once you get past the headers, the column actually changes its column name to reflect the header title. So if you have a lot of data and you've scrolled all the way down, you still haven't, um, you can still tell which header you're in. So we scroll back down and you see that it changes that. So, okay, so one thing, once we created a table, you probably noticed that you got a new design tab. And this design tab is just for your table. So I'm in it right now. It's, it's part of the table tools. Notice that if I click out of my table, it disappears. So I click back in and it's back. So what things can we do here? So you can rename your table. Uh, we don't really need to do that, but it's just a matter of typing in there. You probably want to do this if you have a lot of tables, a lot of data. That way it's easier to find. You can resize your table. You can increase the data range. So the resize table pops up and um, you can just expand, hit cancel. Um, you can insert a pivot table. So you click on this and the create a pivot table options come up. 
we're going to exit out of this. Um, we're going to cancel out of that. If you are interested, I do have another video on how to create pivot tables, how to work with them. So um, please do go watch that. You can also remove duplicates. And once we click on that, this little dialog box shows up. Now our data doesn't have any duplicates, but if it did, we have the My Data Has Headers checked off and you have the columns. You would just uncheck columns you don't want duplicates removed from. So let's say we just wanted to check duplicates under salesperson. Um, you would just keep only that column checked. And then what would happen is if it does find any duplicates, it just deletes them right out. So we will cancel out of that. You can convert your data back to a range. Now, the reason you'd want to do this is because now you may have done other things to your table. You may have added more data and it's all formatted the way you want it. But when you do that, you actually preserve the formatting. So I'm on the table, I convert to range. And do I want to do this? Am I sure? Yes. And then now I no longer have a dynamic table. I just have a data set, but that, that data set that's in list form is formatted differently. So if I want to share this with someone or um, let's say I don't necessarily want them to filter through the list um, like I was doing, this would be a great option. But we're going to undo this so I can continue showing you. Um, and another thing is, you probably saw this, I forgot to mention it, it automatically puts in filters. So you have your little filter button so you can choose whatever one you want. If I just want to look at Buddy and Emerson's performance, I can do that. We'll undo that. So back in our design tab, um, you can insert a slicer. Now the slicer allows you to filter um, your data more dynamically. So for example, let's say I want to insert a slicer for salesperson and item sold. So I click OK, and now I get two different slicers. Now when I have my slicers, and actually, before we go, I was going to say that this options show up, but before we talk about that, what this does is it lets you filter more. So, for example, under salesperson, if I click on Emerson, it only shows me information for Emerson. I'm going to clear this. If I click on this, I can select multiple. So I can say, I want to see Emerson and Jill or excuse me, this filtered out Emerson and Jill backwards. So that um, I'm only now seeing information for Buddy, Jamie, John, and Sasha. So we'll clear out of that. But another thing that I wanted to show you is up here in the slicer, you can change your slicer caption. So we can say, I don't know, sales peeps. And that changes how my slicer um, is headed so it, it reads differently now but it didn't change what's on my table um, you can see additional slicer settings um, here is the display header that we changed you can sort hide data etc and if you have blank cells or non-blank cells cancel out of that you can change the color of your slicers so let's say i want to choose this light see what we have we'll choose this one it complements our other, our, our table a little bit better. So that changes the color of our slicer. Let's see. Now you can also bring it forward, backward. That just really depends um, if you have a lot of objects in your sheet, how, you know, how to access it. Now you can bring up the selection pane. And this brings this up. So for example, we have two slicers. So if you have more, obviously, you will see them all listed down here. Then you see this little eyeball to the far right that hides them. So you can say, you know what? I only want to see sales peeps. So then you can hide items sold. And what that's helpful is if you have a lot of data that you're trying to filter through a lot of slicers, you can only, you know, you can set this up. So you're only looking at what you need. That way you're, you know, while you're working, it's a little bit less. Um, chaotic. So we will close out of that. 
Um, you can change the size of your slicer. So I'm on this one, so you see how the height, making it smaller or bigger, um, and same thing with the size. So you can play around with that a little bit. I'm going to actually delete my slicers. I just highlighted them, hit delete, and we're back in our table. So the other thing we can do is you can work, refresh your data, export it. This is more if you're working with external data that you pulled out of a database um, or something else. Now here, the style options, you can do, um, you can change the look of the table a little bit more. So you can get rid of your header row if for whatever reason you don't want that. You can uncheck it. You can add a total to your row. So if I do that, we see that the total dollar sold is 288,000. You can unband your rows. I kind of like banded looks. Um, bold the first column. Bold the last column. Do banded columns. So, and, and, and you can get rid of your filter button. So you can do a lot of things with tables um, that'll help you if you go to present this information to someone else. And while you're manipulating the information through your table, you can filter um, in different ways. So I hope that you were able to find this video helpful. And if you did like it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks.